Hello, I'm Brock Schildhouse, and because things on the internet seem to lose their date references pretty easy, today is June 26, 2023, Monday, and uh, this video has to do with our visit to the Steichen Ice Cap in Alaska, uh, and we were there on May 24th, 2023, while on the Disney Wonder Cruise. And uh, to address one issue you're going to see, there's probably a couple of photos of me in this. Uh, I don't look real happy. Uh, I had some dental work done right before our vacation, and it was wrong. It, was, it wasn't done right, and they didn't have time to correct it. And uh, it felt like I had a 16-penny nail uh, jammed up in my jaw. I was on a... Uh, soft food diet, no, nothing hot, nothing cold, uh, anything hot or cold just drove me off the edge of the pain scale, and uh, I wasn't sleeping, so I'm dog tired, I'm on a once in a lifetime vacation, I'm trying to enjoy it, and I'm in severe pain, so sorry about that. Uh, it was a very interesting, um, uh, trip. We got off to Disney Wonder, got on a smaller boat, went farther up, and then the Disney Wonder came up almost as far as we did. Let's get on with the video. Uh, it was it was fantastic. One of the unexpected surprises, maybe expected surprises on this trip, uh, up to the uh, Steichen, as I understand it, ice cap. The difference between an ice cap and a glacier is the size. To me, they're both massive amounts of ice, so they're both glaciers. And we'll get into some other things, was we found orcas. And we found several of them. And they were up here after the seals. And I'm going to let you uh, run through and just watch the videos of the orcas, and then I'll, I'll pick it up when the orca videos are over. The orcas are up here because of the seals, and the seals are those brown spots uh, sitting on these ice floes and ice bergies or growlers. Uh, an ice flow is a piece of flat ice. Uh, an ice berg is a massive structure. Uh, it's over a certain size, like 45, 50 feet long, something like that. A bergy is a smaller piece of ice that's not flat. Uh, it's also called a growler. In the Navy, we called them growlers. And there were seals all over the place up here. I'm going to let you just watch the seals. Two 
250 feet above water, 350 feet below water, and it's an estimate. Only because we were up with them earlier. It's a lot different, like in person, than it is like on the documentaries and stuff you see. You see on documentaries, like, oh, they're probably pretty big. When you're here, it's like, wow, that, that's big. But it, it, from here, yeah. 250 feet above water, 350 feet below water, give or take, but it still doesn't look that big. It just looks huge, but how do you measure it? Yeah. I mean, how close are we? When you're out on the open ocean on an aircraft carrier and you find an iceberg that challenges your size, you know that it's big. Well, it shows up, right, I assume? Well, I did 19 and a half years as a naval aviator. Oh, that's it. And I was bridge qualified on an aircraft carrier. And we would have our, um, ooh, I know the rating. Uh, our NAV enlisted guys, we would have them check with our watch standards uh, every five minutes to make sure they were still on the ball. Here? I would have been up there. Well, no, 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 like, like. Uh, we we pulled we pulled the uh, Min the uh, Nimitz into Anchorage on okay. one occasion, but I lived in Japan on the Midway for five and a half years. Okay. On the Nimitz for two and a half, and then uh, eleven others for days and months at a time. That's cool. Yeah. I got him. <laughs> yeah, a lot of my a lot of my buddies before we went our own ways for college and stuff. Uh, a few of them went to, one went to the Marines now, one in the Navy, two of them are Air Force pilots now. So it's always interesting hearing other stories about where they're based, all different places, and it's all very different environments. Yeah, I've only been in 29 different countries that I can remember. Still more than most people. It's cool though. People ask me what my favorite port call was. Um, look close. This is uh, two adults and one pup on a crawler. Sky 10, I believe that's how it's pronounced, ice cap, uh, massive chunk of ice. Prior to uh, getting on the boats, there was a presentation on the Disney Wonder. They brought in a geologist, I believe he was, a uh, PhD, and he talked about this, and his statement was the face of this uh, ice cap or glacier was estimated at 250 feet above uh, normal water level and um, 350 feet below normal water level. You'll see later on that the Disney Wonder comes up almost as far as we did on our little tour boats. Yeah, so this was this was a deep, wide fjord, and uh, we saw no chunks fall off. But uh, we, and, and uh, I apologize for the videos. I've got heads and I've got other people. We've got probably 45, 50 people on this tour boat and we're all trying to get the best photos we can.
all those brown spots are. Yeah. seal on the left out there is dinner <laughs> When you book a Disney cruise, uh, for uh, us at least, uh, they gave us a date that we could live, that we could uh, book additional cost tours, and we did that. We grabbed this one here. It was a small boat tour, leaving the Disney Wonder, going up to the face of uh, the Sky Tin uh, ice cap, uh, and, and we're glad we did it. Uh, we didn't know how far the Disney Wonder was going to make it up. Uh, the fjord, Captain Thorpe of the Disney Wonder said that he wasn't sure. No boats, no no big ships had, had made it up uh, very far prior to our cruise. And you'll see later on that the Disney Wonder came almost, almost to the exact same spot that the small boats did. But still, as we left the Disney Wonder uh, farther down the fjord, uh, we went off on some of the side uh, inlets and, and valleys, uh, saw some interesting stuff, and then came up here. Uh, I, I think this was well worth the money. As addressed earlier, uh, there's a difference between an ice flow. Ice flows are flat. Uh, this video, this section of the video starts out with the ice flows, and then bergies, which are small, non-flat pieces of ice or growlers the navy calls them growlers or at least people i was with call them growlers uh, they're smaller than icebergs they're like f less than 50 feet or something and as you look at some of these um, growlers you'll see that some of them are really blue they're the ones that just flipped uh, as they're in the water they're melting and as the center of gravity changes, they'll flip. And there's some really bright blue ones in here, and they're the ones that just flipped. While we were on the cruise, uh, on the small boats up here, uh, I had just turned off my camera and looked over, and one of them flipped. And I tried to get my camera back on in time. Uh, it takes seconds for these guys to flip. It, it was really cool, and I regret not getting it. Why are they all here? As they melt, they get some really interesting shapes, architecture, nature is just beautiful at this. And as I said earlier, look at the blue ones. Uh, the deeper the blue, the more recent they flipped. And these are just absolutely beautiful. As you look at uh, the bow, starboard bow of the Disney Wonder, you see this appendage sticking out and we weren't quite sure what it was. It hadn't been there before. We'd been down to the forecastle, so we knew that they had uh, areas that they could open up on the side of the ship uh, and, and put lines and, and whatever else out. We didn't know what this was. We solved it uh, a little later in the day. So 
what is that mysterious black mass? They captured a growler and brought it on board and put it up by one of the swimming pools and you could go over and and touch it and play with it and whatever else. Um, this was just kind of cool. Uh, kids were having a ball with this and I mean, this is just one of the added things that they did on the Disney Wonder. They didn't have to do this but it was a kick and, and kids were taking away some of the chunks of the ice uh, that were laying around the deck uh, as their little prizes and it was just fun. number of very active waterfalls uh, in various places up the fjord. Uh, this is a video of just one of them, static photos of uh, waterfalls or videos with people's heads in them. This is the best one I've got. Uh, it was, and, and they were loud. It was, they were beautiful. One of the advantages of purchasing the small boat tour up the fjord is they run you off on, on side inlets on, on other fjords, uh, minor fjords off the major one, which the Disney Wonder did not go in. And uh, this is just some of the photos I took of the area. Absolutely beautiful. This place is brisk, pristine. It's it's absolutely beautiful. This is a photo of uh, the other tour boat with, that was with us, the small tour boats. There were two of them identical. Ours was the St. Peter. When we pulled into one of the following ports, the St. Peter was actually tied up next to us. And along with this, uh, the Disney Wonder pulls up in the fjord and I've got some photos of it. Uh, this is a big ship now. Normally, my, my intention had been to, to, when we got back on, to get down in the stateroom uh, because one of the channels on the television system gives you the ship's latitude, longitude, uh, course, speed, water depth, wind, stuff like that. And I wanted to get that to see how deep this fjord was. It was deep uh, and, and it was big. And the Disney Wonder, I'm going to have videos here. The Disney Wonder comes up here, and I'm used to aircraft carriers. Uh, we don't have bow thrusters. We don't have stern thrusters. The Disney Wonder has three bow thruster, thrusters, two stern thrusters, and she literally pivots in place uh, to come out of here, and that's the end of the video. 
this was a fantastic tour uh, the getting on small boats uh, was an advantage uh, staying on the Disney Wonder uh, w was great and along with this you're gonna see how they got us back on board and uh, how they got us off was, was the reverse thing as you leave the ship you have to show your uh, Disney Everywhere Pass, whatever it's called, your little card. It has to be recorded to find to, so they so they know exactly who's on the ship at any time. When you're coming back on board, you have to check back in. You have to have your card scanned again, and uh, they they make sure it's really you. They look at your photo and they look at you and make sure it's really you. Really efficient operation. This was obviously not the first time they'd done this. It was a great tour. We had a lot of fun. Uh, part of the added value was the 45 minute to an hour discussion with the uh, PhD guy, geologist, hydrologist, whatever he was, very knowledgeable uh, before we even got on the cruise, so before we even got on small boats. That was. He, he just had a whole lot of information about how these things form. Yeah, overall, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the viewing. Thanks for watching. Love the architecture on the ice flows. Mm -hmm. The ship is turning in spot. St. Peter. You can't tell what that's doing. Hopefully they'll see a whale. We are just pivoting in spot. We're right on top of his wake from when he came through. So he was obviously talking to our pilot and our captain. with the bow thrusters and the stern thrusters.